Dear students, note down the PDF file of all these notes have been uploaded in the description of video lecture. Dear students, today we will discuss general characteristic features of biodiversity of platy helminths, the flat worms, in which the body is dorsoventrally flat body, leaf like body. These are the first animals having organs, organ system level of organization. These are the first animals which are triploblastic. Entire body gets derived from three germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. As well as not down dear students, the first animals in which well-developed well organs, particularly the excretory system. And that excretory system consists of special type of flame cells, the solenocytes, the protonephridia, very important for competitive exams, need students. Excretory system consists of flame cells, solenocytes, protonephridia, and in the nervous system, not down, in the nervous system, from anterior end to the posterior end, two longitudinal nerve cords are present. The nervous system is ladder-like. Dear students, two nerve cords which run throughout the body. And both nerve cords are transversely. These are connected by transverse commissures. So the nervous system becomes ladder-like. Two nerve cords. Dear students, two nerve cords. Sense organ. In turbulenius, in planarius, the free living forms, the sense organs are of simple type. These are of primitive type. As in case of convoluta, a balancing organ, and that balancing organ is statocyst. In case of planarius, dugasia, planaria, turbulenius, sensory organ eyes are present. While in case of Parasitic forms like tapeworms, like flukes, the sensory system is absent. Reproduction, very important point, very important point, note down. Reproduction. These platy helminths, the flat worms, are bisexual. It means both sex are united. So these are hermaphrodite, these are monoecious. It means in these, in each organism, both reproductive systems are well developed. They reproduce by both methods, asexually as well as sexually. As in case of planarius, they reproduce. Turbularius, planaria, they reproduce asexually by transverse fission. Dear students, by transverse fission and microstoma, this microstoma, it undergoes repeated transverse fissions. Dear students, repeated transverse fissions, as a result, it produces a long chain of newly formed individuals. And this process is named, this repeated transverse fission, as a result, chain is formed, that is paratony. Dear students, competition students, it is paratony. Some tapeworms, some tapeworms, cystodes, like echinococcus. And this animal reproduce asexually by budding. And the buds may be endogenous or exogenous. In sexual reproduction. Dear students, these platy helminths, they reproduce sexually as well as asexually. In sexual reproduction, these have well-developed sex organs. It means each individual having both reproductive gonads as well as gonodacts. And in their reproductive system, some accessory glands also present. 
very important very important point for competitive exams in these flatworms the fertilized egg zygote and that zygote gets enclosed in a shell in a capsule like structure and in that capsule aggregation of some yolk cells are also present it is named egg capsule dear students note down fertilized egg zygote that is present inside a capsule and that egg capsule having an operculum and aggregation of yolk cells it means the yolk the nutritive food material that is present outside the egg outside the egg cytoplasm such type of eggs are ectolecithal no down no down need student competition student in case of platyhel means the yolk cells are present outside the yolk outside the egg so the eggs are ectolecithal while in other animals the yolk is present inside the cytoplasm of egg such eggs are endolecithal but in these flatworms these yolk cells are present outside this zygote ectolecithal next point very important that is fertilization exclusively it is internal as fertilization fusion of gametes that takes place inside the female body cross fertilization occurs dear students cross fertilization it means the individual having both sex organs both types of gametes but the fusing gametes from different animals except in case of flukes cystoids in case of in case of cystoids tapeworms like tinea in case of tinea tapeworms self fertilization occurs no down it means in these tapeworms cross fertilization as well as self fertilization particularly need student competition student in case of cystoids in case of tapeworms in case of tinea solium self fertilization takes place it means the fusing gametes are derived from the same individual development next important point dear students development development is of both types as in case of planarians in case of turbellarians development is direct development is direct it means there is no larval stage but in case of these trematodes flukes and cystoids the tapeworms several larval form several larval forms are developed it means the liver fluke the fasciola the flukes and the tapeworms the tinea they show polyembryony polyembryony it means in their life history several larval stages are developed as in case of liver fluke fasciola hepatica very clear cut example of polyembryony five larval stages are developed five larval stages and these are Miracidium, second is sporocyst, third radia, fourth sarcaria, meta sarcaria. Need students. Miracidium, sporocyst, radia, sarcaria, meta sarcaria. Several five larval stages develop in case of liver fluke fasciola. Another very important point of this polyembryony. these two forms sporocyst and radia these both larval stages undergo 
पार्थिनोजेनेसिस पार्थिनोजेनेसिस इट मीन्स डायरेक्ट डेवलपमेंट इन दीज लार्वल फॉर्म्स जर्म सेल्स आर प्रेजेंट एंड दीज जर्म सेल्स विदाउट एनी फ्यूजन दे डेवलप डायरेक्टली इन टू नेक्स्ट लार्वा डियर स्टूडेंट्स नोट डाउन दीज आर नोट चेज इन टू सेकेंड लार्वल फॉर्म दीज हैव जर्म सेल्स एंड दीज जर्म सेल्स विदाउट एनी फ्यूजन दे डेवलप डायरेक्टली इन टू नेक्स्ट लार्वा सो दीज टू फॉर्म्स स्पोरोसिस्ट एंड रेडिया द कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम स्टूडेंट्स बोथ दीज फॉर्म्स स्पोरोसिस्ट एंड रेडिया लार्वा अंडर गो पार्थिनो जेनेसिस डायरेक्ट डेवलपमेंट देर जर्म सेल्स गिव राइज न्यू लार्वल फॉर्म्स द इंपॉर्टेंट टू इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट इन देयर डेवलपमेंट वन इज पॉली एम्ब्रियोनी एज इन देयर लाइफ साइकिल सेवरल लार्वल फॉर्म्स आर फॉर्म्ड एज इन केस ऑफ लिवर फ्लूक फाइव लार्वल स्टेजेस मीरा सीडियम स्पोरोसिस्ट रेडिया सर्केरिया मैटा सर्केरिया दिस इज पॉली एम्ब्रियोनी एंड अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दैट इज पार्थिनोजेनेसिस टू फॉर्म्स टू लार्वल स्टेजेस स्पेशली दिस पॉरोसिस्ट एंड रेडिया their germ cells give rise directly another larval forms without any gametic fusion without any fusion of germ cells in the life cycle of tapeworms in the life cycle of tinea two larval stages very important very important hexacanth and cysti circus two larval forms each and every larval stage important for all competitive exams five stages in case of fasciola life history and in case of tinea solia two important larval stages hexacanth and cysti circus larval forms are reported the life cycle their life cycle may be monogenetic means this parasite requires only one host example is diplojuvon but the liver fluke that life cycle completes in two hosts it is diagenetic and dear students note down this opisthorkes this chinese liver fluke that requires three host so it is trigenetic any organism whose life cycle completes in one host is monogenetic life cycle requires two host then it is digenetic and dear students here in trigenetic the life cycle requires three hosts regeneration another very important very remarkable power of regeneration reported in this phylum platy helminths particularly in planarians dear students in tabularians the remarkable power and they show more flactic power of regeneration this more flactic regeneration means each segment of body is capable to give rise a new individual more flactic means entire body gets organized from a single segment economic importance of flat worms economic importance of flat worms generally these are harmful these are parasite ectoparasite endoparasites and they cause several diseases to human beings as well as our useful animals some pathogenic forms pathogenic flat worms of human beings opisthorkes sinensis this chinese liver fluke it lives in our intestine in human intestine it is intestinal fluke of man and it causes opisthorkiasis that leads degeneration of liver jaundice weakness fever p 
पेन इन बॉडी फैसियोलॉपसिस बस गई इट इज अगेन फाउंड इन इंटेस्टाइन ऑफ मैन एंड दिस इंटेस्टाइनल फ्लूक ऑफ मैन इट ऑल्सो कॉजेस दिस फैसियोलॉपसिस इनफ्लेमेशन एंड हैमरेज इन द इंटेस्टाइन that inflamed our intestinal mucosa epithelium cystosoma hematobia that is a blood fluke it leaves in our blood lymphatic ducts and dear students it causes cystom cystosomiasis that leads anemia diarrhea pain fever enlargement of liver and spleen this tinea solium this tapeworm and this tinea saginata it is these both forms are our intestinal tapeworms these are endoparasite of our intestine and they lead teniasis they cause weakness anemia diarrhea abdominal pain and indigestion our digestion becomes abnormal this next form paragonimus westermanni that is a fluke which infects our lung that is a lung fluke of man and it causes paragonimiasis it leads cough fever pain anemia some flat worm flat worms which cause infection disease to our useful animals like fasciola hepatica this is a liver fluke of our sheep and goats that causes liver rot disease or it is fasciolysis that results weakness blood loss degeneration of liver akinococcus granulosus and this is a dog tapeworm and this dog tapeworm sometimes causes infection in our intestine and it leads very important disorder that is hydrated disease that results degeneration of liver and dear students it leads blindness so this is all about phylum platyhelminths the flat worms and in our next lecture means tomorrow we will discuss liver fluke thank you